Hello there, all my crafty friends. I'm Donna from Mason Creations, etc. And here's a very warm welcome to my channel. This is a little bit of a mixed media project. I'm going to decoupage a rice paper image to a canvas and create the prettiest frame using a stencil and some texture paste. This is a great project for a beginner. It's easy and super fun. So if you're ready, let's make a mess. The first thing I'm doing is painting the canvas with a coat of gesso to get it primed. I'm working on a nine by 12 inch canvas, but you can do this on anything, a canvas, cutting board, or any type of media board or wood cutout pieces. My friends at decoupagenapkins.com have all types of items you can use to make this. Actually, all the products I'll be using today came from there. And I'm going to tell you all about them in just a few minutes. Are these just the cutest little bunnies ever? This rice paper is just beautiful. I'm removing all the edges of the paper using a water brush. Water makes the paper much easier to tear. A water brush has a cartridge that you fill with water and then brush it on the napkin or rice paper. The water dispenses easily, so this is really convenient. You can find this in my description box below, in my favorite tools section, just in case you want to check it out. When working with rice paper, it's best to tear the paper rather than cutting it. Torn edges are much easier to blend. I'm going to use Polyvine Decorator's Varnish in a dead flat finish as my decoupage glue. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. It's fun to see what cities and countries you are all watching from. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. I sprayed my rice paper with a little bit of water to make it pliable and easier to work with. Now I'll paint on the polyvine and then lay my image on top of it. This product is very impressive and I've been using it quite a bit lately. It works great as a varnish and a decoupage glue. This formula is somewhat heat and water resistant. There are several formulas and some are highly heat and water resistant. Polyvine is also UV resistant so you can feel free to put your creations in sunlight without fear of fading. I'm brushing it on top of the image to make sure to work out any bubbles and make sure the edges are completely glued down. I'm working from the center outward. I let the rice paper dry for a few hours before moving on. I'm using some beautiful Pentart paints that match the background to sponge around the white part of the canvas and blend in with the colors. Where the colors overlap, I'm doing an ombre effect and lightly sponging the colors together to blend them. If you'd like to learn how to paint ombre, I have a tutorial video on exactly how to blend those colors seamlessly. You can click the link above in the right hand corner to see that video. I'll also leave you a link in my description box below. I'm working on some great spring projects for the upcoming weeks. I'll be doing some decoupage, 3D air dry clay, and mixed media canvases. I am going to do a series of reverse decoupage clear glass plates with some really different and fun techniques on each one. You'll want to subscribe so you don't miss any of them. If you'd like to be notified anytime I upload a new video, click the bell. I had to mix a little bit of green with my blue to get the correct color match.
You can see the edges of the rice paper where the clouds are, but I'm going to fix that. I'm using some white to blend with the clouds and I'll put the paint on rather thick using the sponge and a brush to get rid of the rice paper line. If you're enjoying this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. And why not share this with a friend? Thanks for doing that. I have to say, these Pentart paints are really nice. They go on so smooth and creamy and they have great coverage. I'll let all of the paint dry for about an hour. I'm going to create a frame using a stencil and some texture paste. I used some painter's tape to block off on the stencil the part I'm not using. I sprayed the back of the stencil with a repositionable adhesive spray. This assures the stencil stays in place and gives you a perfect result. It keeps your medium or paint from bleeding under the stencil. I use this anytime I use a stencil. I'm using a palette knife to add the texture paste over the stencil. I'm scraping off the excess and then I'll remove it. Make sure you rinse off your stencil right away. If the texture paste is allowed to dry, it will clog up the negative areas and ruin your stencil. I also spray another coat of the adhesive each time to make sure I get a good hold. I'm going around the board doing this and rinsing my stencil after each application. I let the top and bottom dry for several hours before I did anything else. DecoupageNapkins.com has a great selection of stencils. You'll want to check them out. There was a small piece at the end that I wasn't able to get with the first stenciling. I lined up the stencil and then applied the texture paste to that small area. I let that dry again for several hours before doing the sides. I did the same thing on the sides to complete my frame and then let that dry for several hours. All the products and tools I use and recommend in my videos have been tested by me. I won't suggest something that I haven't used myself. Each product will be listed in my description box below and will have a blue link to make it easy for you to find. Any of the links I provide are safe for you to click on. Now I'm going to do the edges of the canvas. Now this was a little bit of a challenge. I propped the canvas up on a bottle to keep it from falling. I did this around all four sides of the canvas and let it dry. DecoupageNapkins.com has such a great selection of rice papers as well as napkins that you can purchase one at a time. Rub-on transfers, molds, modeling clay, stencils, stamps, scrapbook paper, and much more. Over 7,000 products. They carry three lines of paint, Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint, clay mud paint, and Pentart paints, and a wide range of colors. They are wonderful to work with and send out their orders fast. They are truly your one-stop shop for craft supplies. They offer several automatic discounts when checking out on orders over $50, $75, and $125. Subscribe to their newsletter by entering your email address and you'll receive 10% off your next order. Make sure you check them out. I'll leave you some links in my description box below. Anytime you add texture, it can leave some little sharp peaks. I'm using a sander and going over it lightly to remove the little peaks. I'm lightly sponging some yellow paint on my textured area. The yellow looks so eastery. I love the way this is turning out. I 
I let the paint dry for about 30 minutes. I'm adding some Polyvine Decorators Varnish in a dead flat finish. You may be able to find this on Amazon, but it's about 40% higher in cost. My friends at decoupagenapkins.com have the best price and tons of it in stock. I'm only going to add shine to a few little areas and I'll be adding that in a few minutes but for right now I'm going to paint the entire canvas with the flat varnish and let it dry for about 30 minutes. Okay now we're going to have a little bit of fun. I'm using heavy duty wood varnish in a satin finish and adding a little bit of glitter paint maker in rainbow. This glitter is designed by Polyvine to add to paints and varnishes for some great special effects. I'm brushing it on all the butterflies to make them sparkle. It's a really nice iridescent shimmer. This glitter is so pretty and comes in several different colors. Silver, gold, pink, and rainbow, which is the one I'm using right now. Since I used a flat background, the satin varnish mixed with the glitter really stands out. And now it's time for some more fun. Have you seen glass bead gel? This is beautiful. There are really tiny glass beads mixed in with a clear gel. When it dries, all you see are the little glass beads. I'm mixing a tiny bit of it with gold glitter paint maker. It's cloudy looking now, but when it dries, it'll be clear with glass beads and glitter. I'm putting it in the center of all the flowers. Don't forget, all of the wonderful products I'm using today can be found at my favorite place for craft supplies, decoupagenapkins.com, and I'll leave you links in my description box below. I wanted the bunny's eyes to shine, so I'm painting them with the satin varnish. I also gave all the butterflies another coat to make them shinier. I'm going to use this really pretty yellow gingham ribbon as a hanger for this canvas. I thought the yellow ribbon would look so cute. Seems like the theme of this project is yellow. I tied it in a simple bow and put a dot of hot glue on the knot in the back so it wouldn't come untied. I glued the two ends to the back of the canvas with hot glue. This project is for all my little grandkids, Frederick, Avery, Samuel, Giovanni, and our newest little member, Gabriella. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking my picture in the top right corner so you don't miss any future videos.